we'll receive our offering. Okay. Did you pray? Pray, you pray after that. Appreciate you Brother after Burnett that. letting me come and be here, and I appreciate this meeting tonight yeah, too as well. Me. And by the way, he did a wonderful yeah. job when he preached for me. And he that, loved uh, our people. Amen. Amen, brother. Like I said once before, folks, whenever Brother Burnett was up at the church with us, I don't see anywhere in the word, anywhere in the word of God where it says that heaven segregated. No. I never have seen that, and I don't never see it either, folks, because God loves all, for God so loved the world. Amen. You know, if it wasn't for the black people and the Spanish people and all the other uh, people in the world, folks, it wouldn't make up the world, would it? Because God created all men. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be here, folks. Wouldn't be, I wouldn't even have a hope for us. Right. It wasn't for Jesus Christ being willing to come down here and drop. I was reading back out in the book of Philippians a while ago. Matter of fact, brother, while you was preaching there, they will give me a message. <laughs> I'm going to be a preacher, brother, more than likely. Amen. But anyway, folks, you know, God loves you. God loves us all. Amen. And I thank God that he called me to preach. Amen. It's a glory. Now, I was scared for about two years when he called me. Didn't want to do it. You know, after I started doing it, oh, man, it was a blessing. I mean, I wasn't going to do nothing else now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, you know, the Lord loves us, folks, regardless who we are and what we are, Amen. no matter what we've done. Amen. You know what? It ain't the color of the skin. It's with the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Amen. Thank God if you if you'd seen what I was before I got saved, you'd wonder why God even wanted to call me. And I thank God that he did. Thank God he loved me. Amen. Folks, the Lord's helped us through a lot of things. There have been times in my life before I was saved that I could have died and went to hell. God didn't let me. I laid under a rock, and I worked in the mines for 24 years, and there's a rock fell on me one night, and I did not know it was in the world for three days. And everybody, when they come in there to get us out, they thought I was dead because the rock was on me, and they thought I was dead, so they just left me alone. Started to work with the other guys with me. But you know what? God moved that rock. I didn't move it, but God moved it. Amen. When that rock moved, they said they turned and started working with me then. They said and realized I was still alive. Folks, God's had mercy on me. God's had mercy on you. Amen. Thank God he gave me his grace. Amen. 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 Grace, folks, means that God loves you in spite of yourself. Amen. Amen. God loves you in spite of who you are, what you've done, what you're going to do, or whatever. He loves you, amen. And I'm glad he does. Folks, tonight I thank God for what he's done in my life. We've been to that church we're at right now. We started back in 99 and been there ever since, and I've been the only pastor they've had. I told him the other day, I said, you get ready. If you get tired of me, I said, just let, tell me to leave, and I'll leave. I won't give you no problem. I'll step out. You get tired of me. I said, preacher, we ain't going to get tired of you yet. <laughs> so... <laughs> I said, okay, thank God you won't then. Amen. Amen. But anyway, folks, God saved me in 1977. That lady right there had a lot to do with my salvation. When we got married in 71, I was lost. Thought I was saved. I was raised in church all my life. I thought I was saved. Went for as an eight-year-old boy. Thought I was got born again. Thought I was. But you know what? Y'all know Dr. Bob Bevington here in Knoxville, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Wonderful man of God. Amen. Our pastor had him to come to our church for a revival meeting one night, one week. My wife kept telling me, he said, you want to church with me this week? And she was faithful. I mean, she was a godly lady. She was faithful taking her kids to church and stuff. And I said, yeah, I'll go with you. I forgot about it. I, I wasn't going. But I come in early one night from doing stuff on the farm that I've been doing. She said, now, you promised me you was going to church with me this week. So you going tonight? I said, y'all go eat tonight. I think it's my, now this is my thinking. I said, I'll go tonight and I won't go no more. Amen, because that's on Friday night. I said, I'll go tonight and I won't go no more just to satisfy her. When I got to church, folks, God had different plans. Amen. 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 God gave Dr. Bevington what I needed to hear that night. Amen. I never forget that scripture that he used. Matthew 12, 42 through 44, talking about the one unclean spirit goes out of man. He walks through dry places seeking rest and finding none, but he returns with seven other spirits. But I say that man's worse than the first. Boy, what a message he brought that night. I sat back, I gripped that pew, and I argued with the Holy Spirit of God. I said, I'm okay. 
I'm fine. My daddy's a deacon in this church. My daddy was a charter member of this church. And I started making all kinds of excuses. And the Holy Spirit kept saying, if you die, you're going to hell. That's all he ever said to me, if you die, you're going to hell. Amen. Folks, I didn't get saved that night, but thank God the next night I did. Amen. Amen. Thank God, I tell you, folks. My wife prayed for me. She had every right in the world to leave me and divorce me, but she didn't do it. She loved me. She stuck with me, and she prayed for me. Ask God to save me. Thank God she did. I'm Amen. glad she done it. Amen. I could have went to hell, folks. I'm glad I'm not. Amen. I'm not going now. Amen. No way can I go now because I've got the blood of Christ Amen. applied to my soul. Amen. My name's written in the Lamb Book of Life, folks, and it's going to stay there too. Amen. Amen. It's written in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And His blood don't 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 erase any. His blood is permanent. Amen. Thank God it's there for eternity. Amen. Thank God for it. Amen. Uh, folks, I tell you, I appreciate the opportunity to get to be here tonight. I appreciate the preaching I've heard tonight, too, as well. Thank God for these men's testimonies. Man, I appreciate you giving your life to go to a mission field. Go to try to win somebody else to Christ to try to complete the kingdom of God, try to complete the bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. Because Christ coming after his bride one day, folks. And thank God it's going to be everybody Amen. that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. No matter who it is. No matter what it is, amen. Being born again in the Spirit of God, you're going with Him. But it's sad, folks. The words that Christ is going to have to say one day when He says, Depart from you, work with the naked, I never knew you. It's that's the word Jesus will ever have to say. But, folks, thank God for His shed blood on the cross of Calvary. You know, most of all, folks, too, as well, thank God for His resurrection and His ascension into heaven, folks. You'll start to realize, folks, if he hadn't sent you back into heaven, you and I wouldn't have no intercession between us and God. Amen. 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 Christ went back there to intercede for me and you. Amen. 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 He went there to intervene for us, folks. He went to Calvary to pay the debt, but he went back to heaven to intervene for us. Amen. 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 I'm glad he did. Glory to God, I'm glad I'm saved. Yes, Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you tonight again for this opportunity to have to be here tonight. I want to thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit in our heart tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for the preaching we've heard tonight, dear Lord, the pure word of God. Yes. Lord God, I want to thank you and I praise you, Lord, tonight for the pure word of God. Thank you for Brother Burnett, your Father, and what he stands for, what he preaches and teaches, Father. Thank you for those men of God here tonight, Father, what we've heard tonight. I believe these men are, are your children, as your children and your servants too as well, Father, and I ask that you will bless every one of them. They prepare to go to the mission fields or whatever ministry you've got them called to, Lord. I pray to God you'll bless them, you'll encourage them, you'll strengthen them, and you'll empower them, Father. Lord God, I pray you'll rebuke the devil in their life. And he gets in their pathway, dear God, I pray you'll move them out of the way. And Father, I pray tonight, dear God, you'll bless the offering tonight, dear Lord. You'll bless the gift and the giver tonight, dear Lord. Bless those that can give, those that cannot, Father. And ask, Father, to be used for the for the others, the gospel around this community, around the city, around the world. And help these men, Father. I pray, dear God, tonight your will be done tonight in everything, in every way. I praise you tonight, dear Lord, and I just want to thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you are and, Father, for what you've done for every, each and every soul here tonight. Lord, I love you, and I thank you, and I praise you, Father, for the here tonight, Lord. I love Bar Brother Barnett. I love Brother Black, and I love, I love these other preachers here, too, as well, Lord. They're my brothers in Christ, Lord. I thank you, Lord, again for what you've done for us tonight, dear Father. I pray, Father, tonight you just help us all do your will and honor you and glorify your name. And when we fail you, God, remind us of it, Lord, and we'll confess to you and, and forgive us, Father. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you need to um, go by the table there, God bless you, brother, right there. Um, be sure to go by there if you need to go by the table. Brother Tim will be there. Some people don't have cash. They don't have checks anymore. But if you need to go by the table, he'll be there. Swipe your card.
wonderful you know i appreciate so much and they love the lord they were here last year these precious people pastor Lindsay, and you know what it takes for him to travel here an hour away his age all that he went through he don't, he don't even want to talk about it he had so many surgeries no doubt his back his no doubt the pain that he he came he loves us he knows he knows what we're striving to do and he, he's going this direction he sees this need of this meeting. You understand that? He was here last year. The famous preacher, the so-called famous preacher traveled around the country. They got mad. They can't figure out why he acted that way. Why? Heard the same message. His wife sing. What a song. I mean, God's spirit on her. They came back. I had a white preacher that came last year. He said he didn't want he didn't want to he want nothing to do with this me being a black preacher. He said, I don't go to a black church. Well, not a black church. We got some of the best white people, the most humblest white people in the world in our church. He's precious Guatemalan, Spanish, Portuguese, black, whatever. I mean, I mean, this is what this conference is all about. I hope you know that. And they come back. Pastor Green's back. I, I talked to him. I said, what in the world? I mean, to make a statement that Moses married an Ethiopian woman, don't worry about if your daughter or son's going to bury somebody in, in a ratio. You, just, you ought to concentrate on that they love God and serve God together. I mean, why would you act that way? And, and, and they said, you ought not talk about this stuff until we get the church straight. You heard what he said, the church. What's out there? What's out there? 
out there they need the church to get right. Jesus, the bride, the church. Galatians 2, Paul stood Peter in the face, corrected him, said, you ain't right withdrawing yourself from the Gentiles. What do you mean you don't talk about this stuff? The news is talking about this garbage. We got to address this stuff. It's our crowd today to be an example, to get out there and to spread the word and do something about it. And I'll tell you what these white preachers need to do they never had a black man to preach in their church. Brother Bobby Leonard, we've gone to his camp meetings and gone to his meetings. I've preached there a number of times. He said, I'm going to get you to come on a Sunday morning and preach to the Sunday morning crowd. Independent, fundamental black preacher. First time in the history of his church. 40 years, I believe. I wrote him last year. He's up in age 80. It's hard for him to travel. I love him. If he was here tonight, I'd preach him. He's up in age. It's by the grace of God he's still living. And he would text me. No Jew, no Gentile, no Greek. Up in age. 80 years old, seen all the stinking racism. Over it. No Jew. No Gentile. None of that stuff. None of that stuff. You see? You understand what I'm getting at? We're going to have to deal with it in the church. And so I, I appreciate that so much. And I appreciate um, your sermon. And uh, I believe that we'll see definitely some fruit from it all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And to try to be the light to this old sin sick world. <laughs> Christiana, Greg, would you stand? Brother Burley, my sister, pastor's daughter, dated a white man. Dude, these white preachers are really going to get mad at me, some of them. These black preachers. Let's give them a hand. Newlyweds. Man, I'll tell you what, that's beautiful. Amen. Thank you. We're so proud of you. Serving the Lord and he's studying for the ministry at Crown College and um, <laughs> in Atlanta. Brother Bruce from Atlanta, black parts of Atlanta, so much stinking junk uh, and, and garbage of all the racism down there. And Brother Burley, my assistant pastor, man, he don't see no color. You know, he just loves everybody. <laughs> Amen. Some of these white preachers are going to have babies. <laughs> Some of these black preachers are going to have babies. By the way, it's on both sides. A black preacher, the black people, the black people are going to have some problem with this stuff. That's sad. But I thank God we're going to address it in the church. <laughs> a whole bunch of them get mad. We're going to teach the Bible. Somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't be scared of preacher Barnett. I'm trying to do what I can to help the church. Help the churches, and there I am. And so I thank the Lord so much for the stand we're taking. Let's everybody stand, please, if we will. Everybody stand. Everybody stand, if we will. Get your, get your song book there, okay? And we're going to sing, a, sing another friend. We're going to sing about Jesus. He preached about Jesus. Ain't no friend, no, not one, like Jesus, 332, my my, my dear brother preached about Jesus. Amen. You haven't heard, listen, you, you've you never heard the sermons that I've heard. You name the great men of God and fundamentalism, I heard them. I've been there. I've been blessed. <laughs> they preach Jesus. But at the same token, I seen the stick and prejudice, and I found out they'd even baptize black people. Or the blacks couldn't be members. I traveled. I've been to their churches. I sang in them. I stayed in the people's homes. I was the only black in the choir. I didn't let that stop me. I didn't let that stop me. I graduated from college. Hello. I graduated. I tell our children, you keep pressing on. You keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't you let nobody discourage you. You know, you go to college and they say you can't date because of the color of your skin. You keep going on. You go there for Jesus. You, you go, listen, you, you let that stop you now. It's going to stop you later on in life. Amen. And then we look at our country. We're going to have to vote right. We're going to have to vote right. We're going to gonna, gonna have to do our best to vote right and try to change the tide. Somebody say amen there. 
Isn't that right? No, not one. If you can um, go ahead and uh, turn this pulpit mic up there, if you will. Some, I'll appreciate it. No, not one. We're going to sing. And the choir is going to come up um, on the last verse here. Um, choir, you know, be sure to just come on up on the, on the last verse. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing my friend Pastor Black preach in a few moments. And he's my black brother. Somebody say amen there. Love him. Amen. And looking forward to hearing him preach. He got some of the most humble people on the face of the earth in this church. Man, I'll tell you what. Those folks are up in age. Man, I'll tell you what. They, they, they just harder I preach the more they want. <laughs> he tell you, I preach against this stinking stuff garbage and it's trying to stir us up and uh, reaching a, a, a neglect by, by the way a neglected black African American population of people a mission field in the United States a priest right in church he didn't get mad he, he knows he knows what's going on and then I teach the neglected white population from the black preachers I preach a whole bunch of them all black I said where's your white people Amen. Had a black church in town right here. And I'll tell you, they invited me. I didn't want to come. They begged me. I came. And, man, I preached against I preached against racism. I said, you just as racist, racist as white people. I said, where's your white people? We had our white people. They so mad, steaming. Steaming. Mad. Gave an altar call. Nobody had come. Nobody get saved. Guess who came through that door at the end of the service? You guess. White man, white bright hair. Just walked in the church. Guess who got saved and put their hand up in the air and said they need to be saved? Out of, out, out of nowhere, he popped up. Guess who it was? A white man. Some both sides of the fence, friends. I'm talking about churches. Churches. Yeah, Paul talked about Jesus, but he talked about alcohol too in churches. Paul talked about uh, Jesus, but he did talk about fornicating in the church, yeah. adulterating in the church. Come on, he taught Jesus. Yeah. Come on, talk to me now. Yeah. Have you read your Bible and see the problems that I have? James, respecter of persons. Come on, yeah. having somebody sit up front, back, blacks had to sit in the back. These are preachers preaching Jesus. I got to go on the back of the bus. This is preaching Jesus in their churches. Yeah, some of the popular ones. Deacons. Come on. Back. Blacks had to sit in the back. Yeah. Lawmaking. Can't eat with them. <laughs> they preach Jesus. I'll tell you what. We better preach the whole Bible because it's all about Jesus. What I'm talking about now is about Jesus. Yeah, because this is what Jesus wants. <laughs> Amen. 332. No, not one. We're going to sing, okay? We're going to sing the first, second verse, and then the last verse, the choir's going to come up, okay? Good, thank you. Okay. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like like the lowly Jesus, no, not one, no, not one, no friend like him is so high and holy, no, not one, no, not one, and yet no friend is so meek and lowly, no, not one, no, not one, Jesus knows all about us. Struggles. 
He will guide till the day is done. And there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not on the last. Was there a gift like the Savior gift? Won't choir. No, not one. No, not one. Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide to the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. As the choir is getting ready, you can be seated. The white preacher came to the church of the singing group on the bus and the white preacher said to the, uh, on the uh, people on the bus, the singers, tonight there will be no soundtracks. We're not having it. There will not be no slacks on the ladies. And he said, we will not have any blacks in our church tonight. Lined them up with all that. And the bus turned around and left. My blessed professor at Baptist Bible College East, I love them, Brother Clark. He's such an old, old man. He helped me. He helped me at a scout, at a, contest, a preaching contest, and, and I was involved in it, and what a blessed man, he was a great help, and what taught me in our class in English, and so much, but he told me, he said, he, he had grieved him, they'd go knocking on doors, and soul winning, and a black person would come, and, and, and they'd say something like, um, you know, um, wrong door, or whatever, or they'd move on, and uh, there's times, and They'll have tracks on them, but they won't have the address on it because they didn't want blacks to come. And that's Brother Clark. He's in heaven. And I, I just about came in first place. You had to memorize every, memorize every word. You had to memorize every word. Everything's got to be right. What it's all about. The, everything. They, this critique is a contest with the whole student body. I would have came in first place if I was white. Not just joking, just joking. <laughs> but <laughs> I, 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 lo I loved our teacher. He, he went to his teacher, the, 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 the one that's teaching uh, the preaching class. I, I love him, Brother Burr. I've preached in this church a number of times. And, um, but I'll never forget the concern that they had of the problem. I'll never, concern, I'll never forget talking to my president of my college, Baptist Bible College East, and um, visit his church, Temple Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, where they would not baptize black people. They could not baptize black people. I remember Truman Dollar got him out of that after our president couldn't get him out of it. And he got him out of it. And um, he got him out of that, that junk. And the, 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 the church, you know what's happened through history, some of you know. The church don't even exist. I mean, the liberals are taking over. As a matter of fact, I think it's a black church now. And they lost it. What tragedy, what sadness. So many churches in America. Um, I bring all this to say it's our generation. And we need to really confess up and realize there's some mistakes made. Don't get mad. Just get right with God. Our country is just about to lose it. But China come against us. And Russia. And this COVID-19 is going to be made a picnic. It's going to be made just like a picnic. I'm telling you. It's going to be like nothing if we see a World War III. And I'm liberals getting in office, and they're calling that race card, and they're talking about our presidents of races, all that stinking garbage. You hear me? To get their Planned Parenthood killed babies and sodomy and Black Lives Matter and uh, that, 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 all that's junk that's trying to destroy our country. We don't get some white preachers on the ball. We don't get some black preachers on the ball and address that we've had a problem in our churches and we still have problems. Our countries, we're through. We, if we don't get the black populace evangelized, if we don't get, I'm telling you, get that heart right. I'm telling you, this stuff's real. These woman mayors, black mayors, liberal mayors, and white liberal ones. Isaiah said, when women start to rule over you, 
Read your Bible in Isaiah. Weak. Governors. Using the race car. Lies and deception. White preachers going to have to stand up as an example. I've been to the conferences. Look like white supremacist groups. I've been to the black ones. Look like black panthers. Then you got this thinking liberal striving to get together, trying to break down the racial barriers. Well, I hear white preachers after white preachers, they don't talk about it. Black preachers, they don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. The world is looking for answers. We got to get stirred up. And realize there's a, there's a need for this type of meeting. I try to help my white preacher friend in Troy, New York. He preached for me, I preached for him. And you've seen the Black Lives Matters go into that church, make national news. Breaks my heart. Black Lives Matter crowd, wrong! You, you don't treat God's people that way. Amen. Martin Luther King to act like that. Amen. John Lewis to act like that. Amen. I know he had faults, but Jefferson had faults too. Don't give you a right to tear down the statues. Washington had his faults too. Don't give you a right to tear down the statues. Amen. Amen. And don't give a right to tear down John Lewis. Amen. Who got a skull cracked. Sell a South Selma, Alabama, Bloody Sunday. Peaceful protest. Peaceful protest over that bridge. Went to jail 40, 50 times from his family. Young man. Yeah, he had faults. He had definitely some faults I don't agree with. But you got white preacher after white preacher that has slammed Martin Luther King Jr. And slam him. I've been there. I've heard him. I went to the national meeting when the preacher said, I didn't kill him, but I wish I'd have ran him over. I know he had faults. I know he had faults. But I'll tell you what the white preacher don't understand. Their ancestors weren't the ones. They were slaves and Jim Crow laws and couldn't go to their Bible colleges. And if you even looked at a white, a white woman, you'd get lynched. And if you dated one, you went to jail. And even if you married one in America, you went to jail. You hear me? And then you go to a Bible college. And they give you demerits because they found out you want to date a white girl. And they find a way to kick you out of the Bible college to get a bunch of demerits. Knowing that they said, if you even think about dating a white girl. You'll be kicked out. And you wonder why. And I'm trying to stir you up. John o. Rice, I admire him. John o. Rice, I've been blessed from him. John o. Rice is in heaven. But he's going to tell you he was wrong to teach that book. Segregation is what God wants. Now that's why one of the preachers act crazy last year. Because I'll expose a fault in a great man and say, I admire his good, but don't follow his mistakes. That type of stuff. He don't want to hear. But I can say it about Paul, but I can't say it about I can say it about Peter, but I can't say it about John Rice. Yeah, God put it there. Because great men of God are not always wise. Lerod, you're right. You're right. You're right, Leron, on that subject. You're right. You're right. I'm telling you, they put these white preachers way up here and black preachers. They're not God. They're not God. They're men of clay. There's white preachers scared to death to come to a meeting like this. And black preachers. Crazy. This is the answer to our country. Just get right with God. If you have your preference of preference, don't bring the Bible. You all listen to Brother Burley's sermon last night. Yeah, about Ruth and Boaz. Come on, talk to me now. No, no, no. By the way, that's about Jesus. Preach Jesus. Yeah, Southern Baptists preach Jesus. 
You ever see those signs of, and the black people like my grand like my, my like my daddy, my daddy out in Memphis? That sign that he was holding, I'm a man. I'm a man. You know what they were saying? I'm a real man. They taught black people were not real, real fully men. That's how they justified. That's why they couldn't vote. So what has got to do with today? See, if you don't know, if you don't know about yesterday, you don't know about today. You don't see where we're going in this country. They're trying to destroy our country using this race thing. But you got to tell them. I go out of my way to white people. When I go out there, they say, am I, am I welcome to your church? I said, you're more than welcome. We love you here. Matter of fact, we're going to concentrate a lot of time on you. You can have one if you want one. Come on, somebody say amen there. Yeah. Yeah. You try going to school and college. You go out there and you're in the college and they say, hey, we were over at her house and the preacher's wife said, look at that nigger on the TV. I said, say what? She said, what? Yeah, look at that nigger. Try that being a saved only year. Yeah. Never, never call a person that word. As dirty as low. Amen. <laughs> Teach the kids that. They're going to eventually hear it. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer for a moment. Father, thank you for the choir. I pray, Spirit of God, that you come mightily upon them. And I pray, dear God, that you would please. I beg you, help some preachers to get right with God in America. What is it going to take? Look like white supremacist groups, these, these preachers' meetings. Look like Black Panthers. Sad. Brother Nate's right. It's got to start in the church. They can have a black preacher come if they really wanted one one to come there. Convict your hearts. They can have a white guy come and preach. It's a shame the liberals and the socialists, communists trying to use this thing, destroy, make our president look like a racist. Our president, we thank you for him, a stand. Thank you for a stand for uh, the officers, the police officers. Thank you for a stand of rel religious liberty. Thank you for his stand, my father. Thank you for a stand. He don't want the babies to be killed and murdered. Thank you for a stand, father. Would you please don't let the liberals take over and use the race car. Help these preachers to stand up and say we're not like that. We've made mistakes in our history. and Our church is not like this. And help them not to say it, but just live it and show it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bless the choir, we pray, amen. While walking down a memory lane, a past so long ago, old Satan came right by my side, making me feel low. He brought up thoughts of hurt and pain when I had gone astray. He wanted to discourage me as I walked along my way. He said, you're undeserving, cause I know where you have been. I have a record of your life when you were bound by sin. I know your darkest secrets that you will never tell. What makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? Well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all those things I've done. I truly deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy, wrecked. My goodness is unclean. There's only one thing I could say to what you said to me. It's under the blood. Oh, praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be. My life has been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame, it's already gone. I'm happy reminding you it's under the blood. Victory was given me when I was born again. He washed my 
stains and sinful past and brought new life within. No longer do I bear the mark that sin had brought my way. With happiness and peace of mind, praise God, I now can say, it's under the blood. Oh, praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be. My life has been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame. It's already gone. I'm happy reminding you it's under the blood. I'm happy reminding you it's under the blood. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Let's everybody stand, please. Thank you so much. Pastor Black, if you make your way up, Pastor Black, you can come on up and... Um, He's going to get ready to preach for us. I thank you so much for singing. By the way, every one of them, they go out knocking on doors and go soul winning. So don't look at just singers. They're, they're, they're cleaning the building. They're, 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 they're working. They're working, you see. And, and, uh, they're helping beautify the place. And uh, they're just uh, striving to live a you know, holy life for God. And, and I could say they're sacrificed. They're givers and um, help raise thousands of dollars in the project this uh, th th this year we're working we had with several projects we're working on and but they've been just a, a help and giving and and uh, when, so when you look at their lives don't look at them just singers and uh, lo lo look at um, you know their heart that was striving to serve God you know, right pastor black you, you, you have a, come come sit in my seat right here sit sit in my seat you're my black brother sit there have a seat go ahead go ahead relax go ahead go